Hey guys, so I spoke in my Home Assistant versus OpenHAV video about the wide range of installation options that both platforms have. So I figured it made sense to start covering off some of those options and show you how the installs are done. Today we're going to look at installing Home Assistant or Home Assistant OS on a Raspberry Pi. Um, there are other installation options available for a wide range of devices. Um, we're going to cover the Raspberry Pi today. But if you'd like to see some of the other install options like Docker or Python through virtual environment or a virtual machine platform like VirtualBox or ESXi, then just be sure to let me know in the comments down below if that's something you're interested in. I'll be happy to make that for you. But let's jump into today's video, which is installing Home Assistant OS on Raspberry Pi. First things first, there are a few things you'll need to get started. We're obviously gonna need a Raspberry Pi um, for this. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3B, um, but you can use a 3, a 3B, or a 4. It doesn't really matter, they're all the same. The only thing that changes is the image that you'll use for the installation. You're also gonna need a micro SD card for this, so I recommend a 32 gigabyte A2 class SD card. I'm actually gonna use a 16 gigabyte SD card for this just for demo purposes, but I do recommend a 32 gigabyte just so that you have enough storage space from the get-go. Finally, you're gonna need a spare laptop or desktop with a micro SD card reader. If you don't have a micro SD card reader, you can use something like this, which is just um, a micro SD to USB adapter. So first things you'll want to go ahead and insert the SD card into your laptop or desktop and you're going to want to download a program called Balena Etcher. I hope that's how you say that. Balena Etcher is a free open source project that will write or flash images to removable storage. It works on Windows, Mac or Linux and is super easy to use. After you've downloaded the Balena Etcher package for your OS, you're going to then want to head to the Home Assistant GitHub release page link down in the description below and download the appropriate image for your device. I'm using the Raspberry Pi 3B, so I'm gonna go ahead and select the Raspberry Pi 3 image. If you're using the 4, then use the 4 image. Fire up Belena Etcher and you'll see a super simple and intuitive interface. You want to hit the flash from file button and then select the home assistant image that we just downloaded. Next, hit the select target button and then make sure to select your SD card. Be careful here because you could erase any data on any other drive. If in doubt, just make sure to remove any additional storage that you have and select the correct one. Finally, hit the flash button to start the process. This will take a couple of minutes depending on the speed of your SD card, so just sit tight while that completes. Once the flash process is finished, you'll want to then remove the SD card and reinsert it into the laptop. We're gonna create some network details on the SD card first before plugging it into the Raspberry Pi. Open up the Has OS boot volume on your SD card and then create a subfolder called config. Within that config folder, create another folder called network and finally create a file called my dash network. Make sure to remove any file extensions if you're using Windows. You can then edit that file with Notepad and we're gonna insert a couple of network details. I'll leave the link for these details down in the description below, but basically we're gonna tell Home Assistant what type of network it is, whether it's wired or wireless, what type of IP scheme we're gonna be using, DHCP or static, and a couple of other details like SSID and password. Once you've pasted in those details and saved the file, you can then eject the SD card and then insert it into your powered off Raspberry Pi. It's probably a good time to connect a display to your Raspberry Pi if you have one. It's just a little bit handy to see what's going on. You can then go ahead and power on the Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna connect everything up and we will come back and have a look at that. Your Pi will then power on and after a lot of text outputting to the display, it will then eventually land at a login screen. You don't actually need to do anything here. Um, Home Assistant is gonna then automatically download the latest version of Home Assistant OS, do the updates, etc., etc. This may take about 20 minutes or so, depending on your SD card speed and also your Wi-Fi speed. So just sit tight, be patient, and then we will jump into the next step. Back on your laptop, you're gonna then want to open a browser and browse to homeassistant.local colon 8123, or port 8123, which is the default port that Home Assistant runs on. If no page is displayed or it says connection refused, then just be patient as there could still be the update running. Leave this about 20 to 30 minutes to see if it completes. If you keep spamming the refresh button hard enough, the web UI should eventually open and we can continue the setup. So once the web UI opens, we're gonna end up in this page, which is asking me to create a name, a username and a password. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now.
hit next to create account and then we're going to land at the next screen which is asking you to set a location a time zone elevation things like that this is useful because home assistant will automatically create a home zone which is um, used in location tracking so that when you enter and leave your house it can actually track that and you can do automations based on that so it's handy to enter a location the location will be kept private so don't worry about any of that so I'm just going to go ahead and set my location to the middle of Scotland. Set my time zone. <clears throat> um, I always have trouble finding the time zones. Does, any, does anyone else have that issue? You can also change the units of measurement. Um, so we use metric here, so I'm going to use, set that. But if you use Imperial, go ahead and set Imperial. Click next. So Home Assistant is then going to automatically discover devices that are already on my network that it is compatible with, which is really useful for just being able to add loads of devices at once. So you can see it's actually discovered an ESB home device and a Chromecast device. Um, so you can just click on these to set them up now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. It just saves me a little bit of time. So if we could click on the Google Cast icon, it'll just come up saying, do you want to set up Google Cast? Just click submit. And then after that, that's it done. It's already added. We can select an area. So that, that Chromecast is actually in the living room. So I'm going to go ahead and set living room. Click there and then hit finish. And then we are dropped into the dashboard or the Lovelace interface. And you can see it's automatically added my Chromecast to the dashboard as living room TV. So that's useful. And so that's it guys. Home Assistant is now officially installed on the Raspberry Pi. Let's take a quick look around the interface and I'll show you a couple of the options and what they do. So the first one we're on is the overview page, um, which is indicated in the top left. Um, and this is the, the main dashboard for Home Assistant. So Lovelace by default actually comes in automatic mode, which will automatically add devices to your dashboard as they come online. This is okay if you just want them to appear automatically, but if you want a bit more control over it, you can head over to the top right hand corner, click the three dots and click configure UI. You'll then get a little message which will pop up. Um, and you can select the options and just press take control. That'll give you the option to, to add your devices as you want them to appear. You can configure them in different ways and how they appear. Um, and you do that using the plus button over on the right hand side. Click that and you get a wide range of cards that'll pop up which you can change the way that your devices are displayed. So moving down the list on the left hand side, you can see that we have the map option or menu um, if you click on that it'll show you your default home location so mine is actually in the middle of nowhere um, just because i picked it up and dragged it onto the map but yours should be a map location of wherever you set your location to um, once you start adding device trackers or location trackers into Home Assistant, it'll show them on the map here too as well um, with additional icons and it'll also show your zones so you can create a work zone or um, different zones like someone else's house zone or work or school or something like that. They'll all show up on the map here um, and it'll show your location trackers as they enter and exit those zones. So that's actually really useful for um, automations. Next, moving down to the logbook option. So the logbook option um, is actually really useful. Um, I obviously don't have anything in my logbook just now, but it's basically an entry every time a device or a state changes within Home Assistant. Um, so you can see all the different times that um, different sensors change their states. Um, so it's really useful for just being able to track back and look at the history. You can change the dates in the top as well and you can also filter it by the device. Moving on to the history. History again is also is quite similar to the logbook. It just shows you the previous um, states of the device um, and what time they changed. It just makes it a little bit easier for being able to track um, specific devices only um, and what time they changed to different states. Moving down to developer tools. 
So developer tools is actually really useful for being able to configure and track states within Home Assistant um, and also check that your templates are working, check services working or just generally get a feel for how they work. If you head over to the states tab, which is the default, you can scroll down and get a list of all your devices and entities within Home Assistant and what their current state is and what their attributes are. So you can see here, um, my sun.sun .sun entity, is, the current state is above horizon. In the attributes column, it'll give you a bit more detail about that particular entity. The services tab will allow you to trigger services as you see fit, instead of waiting for a device or an automation to happen. You can actually test the services right within the UI um, with different functions and just make sure that they work as expected. You can kind of use this to figure out how the services work and once you get the data into the service you can then copy and paste that into your automations. It's just useful for being able to manually trigger services as well. Heading over to the template tab. Template tab is so useful for being able to um, create your templates and just check that they function as expected. Um, you can literally program you can literally write out your templates here um, and see the expected result. And then you can then copy that into your automations and they should function as expected. Instead of having to wait for your automation to trigger to see if it worked or not, you can just use the template um, developer tool to just make sure that they're working as intended. The events tab is kind of similar to the services tab. It just allows you to fire events manually. Next, if we just head down to the supervisor option in the menu, and then we, again, we have four tabs along the top. The first one is dashboard, and the dashboard is actually empty at the moment. If Home Assistant has an update, this is where it will show it in the dashboard, but because we just installed from the latest version, um, there is no updates at the moment. Here, it will also show you a list of all the add-ons that you have installed as well, but because this is a new system, we don't have any add-ons installed. Um, but let's actually move on to the add-on store and install one. So clicking over to the add-on store, this is a list of add-ons, official and community add-ons that you can just one click to install and they will be installed straight into Home Assistant through Docker. So let's actually install an add-on and I will show you just how easy it is to install. So let's just select any add-on. Um, I'm gonna select the Let's Encrypt add-on. It'll pop up the page, it'll give you a description and how to use it. And we're just gonna click the install button. Give that a couple of seconds. Okay, and as you can see, that's installed now, and I now have a start button, um, as well as a start on boot option. So you can go ahead and click the start button on there. That'll fire up the add-on, and then it's now running. You can also see it gives you a couple more options along the, along the top, configuration and log. Um, so the configuration just basically sets the options for that add-on. Now, if we head back to the dashboard, you can see that the Let's Encrypt is now showing under the Add-ons tab. So that's how you install add-ons. Next, we're gonna head over to Snapshots. Um, and Snapshots basically allow you to create a point in time to restore back to if you ever had an issue or an error with your installation. I do definitely recommend creating regular snapshots, especially before and after updating your system. Heading over to the system tab, this just basically gives you information about your um, system, the supervisor version, the host system, and your hardware. You can click on the hardware tab and that'll actually show you all the devices connected to your hardware. You can also change the host name from here as well. If you don't want the host name to be Home Assistant, you can change that to whatever you want and set that here. Next, moving down to the configuration menu, um, I won't spend too much time here because that's kind of a whole section for another video, but this is where you kind of create integrations, add devices, um, automation scripts. You can also create users, restart home assistant, um, check logs, etc., etc. from here. Finally, going down to the notifications tab, um, you can see mine has one notification. This will just give you information that home assistant is trying to tell you like new devices discovered or perhaps um, failed logins so that you can see someone trying to access your home assistant installation without your permission, maybe failed failed password attempts and things like that. You can see here that mine's actually telling me about a new device discovered on the network, which is good. So you can actually just click check it out from the notification. It'll take me straight in and, and you can see it's telling me about that ESP home device that I did not set up on the startup. 
Next, if we click on our username in the bottom left, this is where you can kind of configure your profile, change your password, change themes, um, set up multi-factor authentication and things like that. So there we go guys, we've now installed Home Assistant on the Raspberry Pi OS and had a quick tour of the interface. If you want to see the installs for Docker or Python through virtual environment or even on ESXi or VirtualBox, just let me know if that's something you're interested in. I will definitely be happy to make the videos. Thank you again for all the amazing support on Patreon and even all the amazing comments and likes and views that you've been giving me. I do appreciate it so much. Seeing all the support is actually amazing and it's definitely a lot more support than I thought I would ever get. So I can't thank you enough for that. Thank you for watching this video. Um, any suggestions, let me know down below and I will catch you in the next video.